Hi, welcome to Simultaneous Equations 4, Substitution Method. So this is the third and final method that I'm going to show you in this series of videos on Simultaneous Equations. And this method, not dissimilar to the elimination method, is a difficult concept maybe to pick up at first, but once you understand it, it's quite easy to do. And this method will also be really helpful in the future because it does apply to a lot of different areas of mathematics. So understanding not only how to substitute numbers but algebraic expressions is an excellent skill to have. So simultaneous equations for substitution method. Again I'm going to show you through examples. So this is example number one. And again we have two equations but this time it's going to be slightly different. One of them is already written in simple linear form with the y as the dependent variable, as you're probably used to. The second one will be written as we're used to from earlier, y equals 2x, y plus 2x equals 1. So this will be equation 1, and this will be equation 2. Nothing changes there. But what does change is this time I'm going to recognise that y is by itself, and it's equal to 7 plus x. So if y is equal to 7 plus x, I think I could write equation 2 as plus 2x equals 1, but I'm going to write 7 plus x in instead of y, because y is equal to 7 plus x. So what I've done is I've taken one of my variables, I've substituted it out for what it's equal to in terms of the other variable. I lose one of my relationships out of this, but I do gain an equation with just one variable. And now I can solve that equation. 7 plus 3x equals 1, subtract the 7 and I end up with 3x equals negative 6 divide by 3 and I get x equals negative 2. There's my x value and now I have to substitute that in y equals 7 plus x so y equals 7 plus negative 2 and that means that y equals 5 and of course just like earlier we verify into the other formula number 2 and there's our first example. This is example 2. 2x plus 3y equals 13, equation 1, and x minus 4y equals 23, equation 2. This will be looking a lot more similar to the ones from the elimination method and of course you could use elimination method here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange equation 2 to be x equals 23 plus 4y. All I've done is I've added 4y to both sides. Now I'm going to use that to substitute out the x in equation 1. So number 1, I'm going to get 2 plus 3y equals 13. And my 2 is not 2x, it's 2 times 23 plus 4y. Because x is equal to 23 plus 4y. So I can do that, of course. Now that I've done that, I'm relying on you having some basic expanding bracket skills, simplifying algebra skills here. So I do 2 times 23, 2 times 4y gives me 46 plus 8y plus 3y equals 13. Simplify, 46 plus 11y equals 13. Subtract 46 from both sides. 11y equals negative 33. Divide by 11, and y is equal to negative 3. x equals 23 plus 4, and in red, negative 3, because y is equal to negative 3. So this equals 23 minus 12, which equals 11. So x is equal to 11, and now I very quickly verify. Welcome to example 3. Again, same process, equation 1 and equation 2. This time I don't have an x or a y with a coefficient of 1, or an x or a y by itself already. So instead I need to rearrange one of the equations to make that happen. Now it doesn't really matter which equation you choose, once you rearrange it, it will all still work. But it's about choosing to try and make things less complicated for yourself. And in this case, my easiest selection, equation 2. Because equation 2 doesn't have a constant value. Whereas equation 1 has 38, equation 2 has 0, which is going to make things a little bit easier. So I'll start with equation 2. 
which is 3x minus 2y equals 0. I'm going to add 2y to both sides to give me 3x equals 2y. And then I'm going to divide by 2, which will give me 3 over 2x equals y. Now I could have divided by 3, and that would have given me my x by itself. I could have then substituted my x back in, and it will work exactly the same. And in fact, a good test for you would be to try that and make sure you get the same answers. I've divided by 2, though, to get the y by itself, because I would prefer to work with 3 over 2, which is the fraction of half, rather than 2 over 3. Once I get into thirds, things do start to get a bit complicated. So I'm going to work with 3 over 2x. Now I'm going to substitute in y equals 3 over 2x into equation 1, because I've already used equation 2. Just be aware of that. So I get 2x plus 5 equals 38, and that 5 is 5 times 3 over 2x. That gives me 2x plus 15 over 2x equals 38, which gives me, now because I have a fraction of 15 over 2, I'm going to multiply everything by 2, and that will give me 4x plus 15x, because the 2 I multiplied there cancelled that 2 out, equals 76. You can use a calculator for that. 19x equals 76. Divide by 19. And again, use the calculator, you get x equals 4. Now I'm going to use that to substitute back into this equation, where I know what y is equal to in terms of x. y equals 3 over 2 times x, which equals 3 over 2 times 4, which equals 6. So y is equal to 6, x is equal to 4. So I'm going to verify into equation 1. So there we have it. In each case, I've got a variable by itself so that I can substitute that variable out for what it's equal to in terms of the other variable. I've then done that substitution. I've calculated the first variable. I've resubstituted with this, the, the known variable to calculate the second variable, and I have verified in each case. Thank you for joining me. I hope that uh, you found this useful, and I look forward to having you join me for the wrap-up session, Simultaneous Equations Session 5. Goodbye.